Hi everyone and welcome along to another episode of Destination DCU. I am delighted to be joined today by Dr. De James Fitzgerald from the DCU School of Law and Government. James, how are you doing, sir? Not so bad, Colm. How are you? I'm good. We are recording this. It is uh, on Friday. It's uh, The sun is shining, so can't complain too much uh, anyway. Now, the reason I was looking to, to speak to you um, outside your, your obvious academic abilities are that you are the program director for the International Masters in Security, Intelligence and Strategic Studies, the IMS ISS program. And uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit more about that program and, and what it involves. Yeah, sure, Colm. Um... So we established that in 2017. So it's been running for well three years now, and we have look. We've been lucky enough to get two rounds of funding from the European Commission. So it's part of the Erasmus Plus scheme, which is based really around knowledge transfer, uh, mobility, and so on. And so it's a 24-month program on those uh, areas: security, intelligence analysis, uh, strategic studies, all of that type of stuff. And um, what the students do is that they go, they go to um, different mobility periods. So they start off in the University of Glasgow, um, which is one of the top, uh, the top ranked universities in the, in the world, thank God. And then they come to, to DCU or as of this year, they have, a, they have an opportunity to go to Trento in North Italy. And then they have their summer and they have summer schools and options and stuff like that. And then they all meet up then in Prague, in Charles University in Prague for their third mobility period, which is a kind of a year in. And then they have all along that way, they have opportunity for kind of work placement and so on. And at the end of it, then they produce um, a 20,000 word dissertation and reports. And, and that caps off their, their 24 months, to be honest. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting program. I suppose I've been a little bit involved on in terms of the, the students coming in and, and seeing, and they, they're a really diverse cohort of, of students. Maybe you could talk a little bit about kind of the backgrounds of students who tend to, to study on this course. Yeah, so this is one of the one of the really nice things about um, an Erasmus Mundus joint master's degree because this is what it is and that day a lot of the funding so we get all these headline figures for for the funding but the vast majority of that funding goes towards paying for scholarships for students for full full scholarships so they don't have to pay the fees for example uh, they get a kind of a travel allowance and they also get a subsistence per month. And one of the conditions to that, which is, I think, quite forward thinking from from um, from the EU, is that funding is kind of locked into geographical regions, right? So we can only kind of fund, uh, unfortunately for, for Americans or Europeans, two from each region, right? But the rest of, of those, typically around 22 scholarships per year, they're dotted all around the world. So what it guarantees is that every year we have a really nice mix uh, geographically um, from people coming in from from all around the world, so it's it's inherently cross-cultural, uh, multicultural, interdisciplinary. We take uh, people from you know their backgrounds in security already. We have people from uh, various police forces around the world. We have people who've done like physics or chemistry or something not directly uh, related to security. So it's a big mishmash, and we tend to get. Um, a cohort of around, I guess at this stage, probably about 80 to 85 students uh, per, per intake, um, with, as I said, approximately a, qu a quarter of them uh, through scholarships. So the whole cross-cultural, multicultural uh, aspect of it is completely integral to it. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I think that's really important, uh, to be honest, in the current environment. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why um, the European Commission has upped the funding for Erasmus Plus uh, as of this year. So. Uh, so from that perspective, yeah, I, I, I pretty much very much welcome those values. And I think any student who takes the program does so too, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It's always interesting when I talk about the Erasmus program with people from maybe outside of Europe and they're always amazed by it. It really is one of the incredible programs that the EU has put together and it, the benefits are just so many fold. Um, and your program being kind of one example. Now, maybe as, as a as a lay, as a lay person, or, or, or you know, and for people watching this, what are the types of things that that students study on the program? So yeah, I mean, there's it's mainly kind of around. 
theory and practice, let's say, of kind of security and intelligence. That's the kind of the whole hub of it. And I guess one of the things that we really wanted to, to address uh, that has been quite difficult in other kind of security degrees around the world, because there's quite a few of them now, is that kind of linking this whole theoretical conceptual stuff like, you know, what is terrorism or what is environmental security or whatever, um, to link that in with how to actually perform security analysis, right? So how to do social media uh, intelligence analysis and and different types of, of, of intelligence analysis and security-based analysis that's becoming more and more uh, sophisticated. And so we try to do that and that's why we bring in kind of work placements in particular so that students, it's not just about this kind of abstract navel gazing, uh, is that they sit down and learn these kind of uh, practical, uh, practical research skills. So, I mean, yeah, at the beginning they kind of go into the 101 of security, right? So what are the what are the main theories, the perspectives? Same thing with intelligence. And then when they come to DCU or, or to Trento, then they can begin to specialize. So in DCU, I think we've at this stage about 16 or 17 modules available to them, uh, delivered by our colleagues uh, across the school on all sorts of areas such as peace building or terrorism or you know the united nations and then we also have a kind of a geographic focus which is good so the politics of the middle east north africa um uh, politics of latin america and so on and so on so and then when they go to prague they get to they get specialized if they want in kind of cyber security artificial intelligence all this stuff that i think is pretty cool and actually because one of the kind of silver linings of the pandemic i suppose that we i suppose we have to look for to keep saying is that it allows us to uh, to join into these classes remotely so actually i'm taking part as a student in two classes in prague this semester around artificial intelligence and, and philosophy and all this type of stuff because you know basically i find it interesting as well so um so that's pretty much the, the the kind of broad gamut of what they what they can study you know very good um and it's uh, really interesting to hear that you know you yourself are uh participating and, and and learning new things which is always good to hear and i suppose james then when students complete the course what are the kind of types of areas of work that they tend to go into yeah so i guess we're we're still kind of learning that a little bit because we've just we've just kind of passed our second cohort because it's two years in that lead-in time. Um, but from what we're seeing in terms of jobs, there's actually really high incidence of, of our graduates getting work. So thankfully enough, I think a lot of it's got to do with the Erasmus branding. And then on top of that, you know, that our, our colleagues in the school and, and uni other universities do such great work is that it's gained a reputation. So we, we get, we get quite a bit of contact now from, from companies kind of, uh, looking for our graduates. So some of them have gone into um, in, to work in social media companies such as Twitter and Facebook, for example. Uh, others have gotten directly involved in politics. We had one, um, one graduate who was working on Bernie Sanders' campaign uh, before he got dumped out of the race, I suppose. Um, and then you've plenty of people working in departments of foreign uh, foreign affairs, uh, research kind of think tanks. Um, so a whole a whole kind of a whole kind of gamut. And it's important to note that I guess, especially post 9/11, but I think in particular the last kind of six or seven to eight years, there has been just been more and more activity in terms of security research centers and this type of stuff. So whereas when I did my masters in this kind of area a long time ago. There weren't that many options. Now there's more, and I think, thank God, uh, Erasm seems to set set them up nicely for that. You know. Yeah, no. It it sounds like there are a plethora of different options available to students, and and they go into all sorts of different areas. So for students who might be watching this and they like what they hear and they think, yeah, that might be a, a good you know program for me. How? Can they get more information? How did they go about applying, James? So I guess with the with the volume of applications uh, that we get, I mean, what we set out to do a couple of years ago is just put as much stuff on the website as possible. And I suppose that's not that's not a cop out. You know, that always sounds the way like you check the website. Uh, but really, that is the best way. Um, so if you just type IMSIS, I-M-S-I-S-S -S -S, into Google, it should be the first thing that pops up unless, you know, somebody else has stolen it from us, but I don't think so. And um, 
and all the information is there. So, but as a kind of a as a kind of a synopsis of what you do, you just follow the online portal. Um, you uh, you kind of upload kind of transcripts and you give an outline as well of why you want to do the course. So it's not just a pure kind of absolute meritocracy that everybody that comes from kind of Ivy League schools or Oxbridge or whatever. Uh, with all their qualifications and of just straight A's across the board, well, they're automatically in. Of course, uh, uh, top-end students are always welcome and take part uh, routinely in the course. But it's also about why you're doing it, you know, because it's not just about, I guess, sitting in your classrooms and learning about the subjects. It's about being part of this kind of mobility, uh, going around Europe, what you think is going to add to your career, to your life experience and this type of stuff. So we look for a well-rounded, I guess, application uh, as to why one would want to, to join the course. But there is a distinction we made, I guess, between those who will be applying for the scholarships and then those who will be applying for the, the fee paying um, uh, components to it. So you can apply to both uh, or one or the other, you know. Okay, that's no, that's re really useful to know. Um, and I think you've done a great job of outlining the, the program and what it involves. Now, outside of being the, the program director for IMSIS, um, what, what else is it, I suppose, that, that do you, are there other courses that you teach um, at, at DCU or what are your own research interests? Yeah, so I mean, how I how I became interested in this area was years ago. I, I had done a, an undergrad in business studies at DCU, and um, I suppose when it came to the end of it, I was just like, you know, uh, this isn't really what I want to do. You know, I had visions of uh, sticking on a suit and walking around the IFSC, and it just didn't really speak to me. So I says. Uh, I said I'd do an, an, a master's in something that was, I thought, sounded quite cool. And that was, to be honest with you, that was the real uh, judgment call. I just said, this sounds cool, sure, why not? And I did it. And then, you know, when, when, I, when I got into it, I found it more interesting. I found myself gravitating towards, I guess, terrorism and political violence as a, as a, as a topic. Um, to, I'm particularly fascinated in how much attention it can, it can derive. I mean, we saw it. We're talking this week, but just before the, the the U.S. elections started, kind of chewing up the the media landscape, we had the fallout from the attacks uh, in in France, um, uh, in Nice, subsequently to, to Paris, and that just completely vaulted itself to the front of the of the media agenda. You know, um, and it's that level of power when you think of the amount of people that are being killed every day at the moment, or that are losing their lives. You could say uh, every day in relation to the likes of the, the pandemic and how we kind of attribute a different, I guess, value to, to how people are killed and, and what it means and what it means for society and I guess our own sense of identification uh, as societies. And all of that kind of interests me and then how states try to eradicate terrorism and the potential damage that they can do in that, in that, uh, in that impulse to protect, to protect its image and protect society. So. That was what I kind of really got into, and then, um, lucky enough, I, I got to go on and do the PhD and explore those issues a bit further and whatnot, and then, um, again, lucky enough to, to start teaching in the department, and then just things just went from there, really. Um, and so I teach, I teach a number of courses, I suppose, but at the moment, it will be mostly focused on uh, terrorism, political violence, also some kind of theoretical approaches to security and and all of this type of stuff but um, yeah foreign policy and I've been in DCU a long time you know I'm part of foreign affairs at this point really so um, so yeah a whole, a whole range of modules really. Well, it's a good place to be part of the, the furniture of, and uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to outline what the, the course is and how students can get involved. And I think it's been really interesting to hear, I suppose, you know, your your background and kind of what motivates you. And I think for, for students who are considering the, the course, that will be really insightful as well. So thank you very much, Dr. James Fitzgerald. Been great to chat to you today. And, Thanks, Colin. Uh, re really appreciate you taking the time. No, well, thanks a lot, and, and and I think we shouldn't underplay uh, how much you've done for IMSIS over the last uh, year and a half. So our viewers won't know that, but there's plenty of stuff that goes on behind the scenes with visas and hassles, and there's been plenty of last-minute emails from me, and, and you've been great for for me and the students. So I want to I want to uh, give my appreciation for that. You know, all right, you're more than welcome. Great, great cohort of students. All right, Colin. Thanks very much.